firefighters, EMTs, cops and the like of Reddit. What are some of your most screwed up stories and all your most amusing? Possibly NSFW. 60 year old lady saying her feet felt like Rice Krispies. Shoes came off. Maggots and rotted feet. The worst one to me. Firefighter EMT. Run on a difficulty breathing call. Arrive and I find myself having a hard time breathing due to the smell of crap. I see the PT who seems to be high as balls. We stand her up and her pants are clearly full of shti. We walk her to the ambulance and I begin to start an IV on her. I grab her arm to find a vein and as usual I place it in my lap. The paramedic shouts at me to wait. Then throws a sheet in my lap. She had shti all over her hands and arms that I hadn't spotted earlier. She had been playing in the shti. Then I saw her smile. Please don't do meth. Otherwise. Just about every combination of blood. Piss. Shti. Vomit and removed body parts you can imagine. A huge thanks to the fantastic individual who gave me gold. You are awesome. I was on a junior firefighter program when I was 15 in my small town. I'm talking really small town. Like 400 people. One night a guy was heading home drunk in his pickup truck. Flipped the truck. Wasn't wearing his seatbelt. While the truck was in the air he managed to hang halfway out his side window. The truck landed on its side and slid for about a 100 feet. So there was body and car part everywhere. Being a small town in the middle of BFE there is no cleanup crew. Who do they call to clean up? The fire department. I'm walking around at night with a flashlight. Rubber gloves. And a bag. Picking up pieces of this drunk guy. Edit. It's not like the forced me at gunpoint. The fire department was all volunteer and I said I would help. It's a dead body not like I had never seen one. When I worked for a hospital where the criminal autopsies were performed. Myself and another guy had to transfer an unidentified body from one body bag to a new one. The state had the person listed as an open case with no identity, his head and hands had been removed. That is why he was in our morgue for over 3 years. Even in a chilled environment tissues decompose. Just slower. So the reason we had to transfer him was because he was leaking. We proceeded to pour the liquefied contents from bag A to bag B. Then scup out the bones and hair and other slop. As all of it was still part of an open investigation. TLDR. Repackage man soup in a morgue. Not my story. But a co-worker of mine's who now works at another department. He was dispatched to a call for a man high on PCP at his mother's house and his family was worried about him. When he arrived. He said it was the bloodiest scene he has ever seen. There was blood all over the floor. On the walls. And on the ceiling. When he walked all the way into the room. He saw a naked man sitting on the floor flossing his teeth. Apparently the guy was high on PCP and was flossing his teeth with piano wire. It ended up destroying the guy's teeth and gums. Not my story but that of a friend of mine who is now an ER doctor. When he was a resident. He had two distinguished gentlemen come to the emergency room who both had padlocks on their scrotum. I. E. The locks were attached above the balls so that the locks could not be removed. Apparently these guys were drinking and one thought it would be hilarious if he locked his balls. Without hesitation. The other guy agreed and did the same. Neither. Of course. Thought about whether they had the key to take the locks off before it was too late. Because they were on quite tight. There was a risk of cutting off circulation and staff needed to act quickly. When they discovered they didn't have the equipment to cut the locks safely. They actually had to get emergency locksmiths in to take them off. I was working as in CNA in an emergency hospital when a woman comes in nearly dead and running 104 degree fever. They begin questioning her husband. They finally got it out of him that they had been using ranch dressing as a residual lubricant for 3 months. It turns out to be toxic shock from a massive uterine infection. I refuse to eat ranch dressing to this day. Hidden Valley takes on a whole new meaning. I've posted this one before but my most amusing story being a paramedicus. We got called out to a house in Fremont for a man having a seizure. 
We were right down the street so we were first on scene within a minute. As we pull up we see a little old lady nervously pointing to a man on her front lawn. The guy is disheveled looking. Face down on the ground with his pants down around his ankles. He is moving up and down in a rhythmic fashion horse. It took a little bit of time but after a few moments we figure out the man is making sweet love to a gopher hole in the lady's lawn. About that time Freeman PD showed up. Grabbed the guy and threw him in the back of the squad car fully aroused. The little old lady was confused. I think she sort of knew what happened but didn't want to admit it. The gopher was not available for comment. My cousin is a cop. There was a call a few months ago in my town. A man got into a fight with his girlfriend who was in a hot tub. He went into the house. Got her pet snake, Axe. Four feet long, and started beating her with it like a whip and then threw it into the tub and it died. When my cousin showed up. The snake was still in the tub and the woman was covered in bruises. Bizarre. A friend of mine is EMT. Here are is a good story. So my friend and his EMT partner get a call that a woman just had her water break while having sex with her boyfriend. They rush over to find this fat young woman freaking out complaining she has liquid oozing from her vagina and that she believes she broke her water. My buddy calms her down. Puts on his gloves. And does a quick examination of her nether regions. After a moment down there he says. Ma'am holds up finger this is semen. Your water isn't broken. How long have you been pregnant? She was a large woman. Tough to tell. She replied. No. I am not pregnant but I thought he broke my water. After a quick explanation of human anatomy they left. Perfect example of people who should never be able to procreate. I work for social services. The most screwed up case I've had to deal with, thus far, is when an infant was literally and repeatedly held by the legs and swung up against a wall like a baseball bat. The child is alive but suffered brain damage. The child is about a year old and so far the back of the head is caved in. Can't talk. And the whole right side of the child's body is paralyzed. I really hope the son of bitch who did that is rotting in a wooded area somewhere. I work in the emergency department. The recent case we had was a 67 year old lady who came in because she somehow got a bottle cap stuck in her vagina. She told us she had been drinking all day for the football game. We just assumed she was showing off a party trick. Another case that I remember vividly was a morbidly obese woman who came in by Ems because she broke her ankle. It was an open fracture and her foot was entirely backwards. She stated that she broke her ankle by turning around wrong in her bathroom. Oh. Oh. We always get the gunshot wounds and stab wounds too. We had a gang member come into the ED with three bullet wounds to the chest. The rival gang showed up to the hospital in order to finish the job. So the patient's gang and the rival gang had a gunfight outside the hospital. Which was subsequently put in lockdown. My father responded to a suicide attempt when he was an EMT. He entered the kitchen of the house to find a 300 pound black woman. Completely naked. The kitchen and herself completely caked in white power. She was crying hysterically and after 5 minutes they finally got her to explain that she tried to commit suicide by snorting baking flour. This is from my mother. Who worked in the ER during her residency. She said one of the worst cases she ever saw was a woman who had been beaten by her boyfriend. They had to bring her in on a stretcher. All the bones in her face had been broken. And my mother said she remembered this woman's eyeballs just oozing down her face. Like jelly. She went blind. Of course. And apparently later had reconstructive surgery. But was never the same. EMT here. Got called to a bar for a traumatic injury. A guy had decided to give an airplane ride to a, consenting, woman. Grabbed an arm and a leg spin her around a few times and bounced her head off the corner of a pool table. Nobody calls us because they did something smart. My roommate was an EMT and told me a story about a Halloween where a guy was so drunk he fell off a two story spiral staircase. Crashed through a glass table. And got up and walked to the bar covered in blood and glass to order another drink before the EMTs came. 
got called to a trailer park for a drunk guy who beat himself up. Walked in and noticed the walls were moving. Millions of cockroaches. And the family of four acted like nothing was wrong. Had a friend's dad who was an EMT. He got a call one night to head to the train station for a stomach wound. Upon arrival he noticed a man running around swinging what looked to be a whip all around the station as people ran from him. Closer inspection revealed this was the man's own intestines he had cut from his belly. Cops cannot reason with him. So they decide to taser him in the chest. All that did was make him angry. So he started beating the taser lines with his own bowels until he was tackled. Till. Morbidly obese people haunt the nightmares of every EMT dispatch. 50 something biker got sideswiped by a car on the road and severed his leg mid femur. When he finally dropped. The exposed bone dragged through the dirt on the side of the road. When we brought him in. He had clumps of grass and earth sticking out of his bone. My sister's husband is a firefighter EMT who was called to the scene of a little boy who was hit outside his driveway by a drunk driver. The boy was getting off the bus as his mother was open armed waiting for him to run to her. The bus driver looked both ways and waved him to go. But a drunk driver came speeding at 60-90 mph around the bend and hit the boy obliterating his body in two and splattering his brain all over the bus and his mother. My sister's husband was first called on the scene. And as protocol demands. He was to take the pulse of the top half of the boy's body as his mother deliriously was heard screaming inside the house as she was being restrained. Her husband saw 15 plus school children screaming and crying as their bus mate was all over their bus. Why he still had to check for pulse? I do not understand. While working for the city. My sister said their marriage was a disaster due to his numbness from the job. He now is a firefighter at the airport and said he feels his life is back on track again. EMT here, went to a call for woman in labor. When we got there. She was sitting on the toilet. Holding the baby. She said she had no idea she was pregnant. A friend of hers had commented that she looked like she had put on a few pounds. She came to the bathroom to take a pregnancy test. Which was still on the sink next to her. She called her husband at work to tell him she just had a baby. He came rushing into the house and the look on his face was priceless. Approaching a car in a drainage ditch. Window is cracked. You can already smell the booze. Young woman and driver seat. Thin little thing. Weeks of jack. Bloodied face from the airbag. She is muttering something over and over. Ma'am I'm here to help. She continues looking forward and muttering. Ma'am I'm here to help. Are you okay? Touch her lightly on the shoulder. She stops muttering. She turns to me and says the worst thing I have ever heard. Where is my baby? I notice the child seat and the passenger seat for the first time. I notice why the window is broken there is a hole. She didn't live long with every bone in her body crushed. Well at least that is what I was told by the paramedics that actually found baby when they arrived. Girl was arrested. I was 16. I've graduated college. Done my fair share of drinking. People still wonder why I get angry and upset sometimes when I drink. It only happens when I smell Jack Daniels. Not my personal EMT story but some of my fellow volunteers responded to a call where the patient had a golf ball stuck in his butt. He said. I'm not gay I just wanted to try it. One in a million shot doc. A few years ago around 3. 30 am my crew responded to a house for chest pains and shortness of breath. As we walked into the house we were immediately engulfed in the foul stench that was produced by the combination of both urine and vomit. I could see three cats running around and assumed that was the source of the stench however as we climbed the stairs of about a 3 feet wide hallway the stench intensified. We opened the door to find a woman weighing legitimately around 400 pounds covered in her own piss. Tea and vomit. Not only is this the worst thing that I have ever smelled in my life but to top it off your shoes stuck to the floor. And I mean really stuck. The two officers who responded on scene refused to enter the house due to the smell. I have never smelled anything since then which has ever even come close to the smell. TL. DR worst smell anyone could ever imagine. Cops refused to enter the house. 
Vix Vapor Rub. You know what I'm talking about. My dad was a fireman EMT cop jailer for most of his life. Needless to say. He has the best stories. He told me that one night. It was wicked rainy and dark and they got a bunch of calls about a truck that ran through a couple telephone poles. So when they get there. They found that the driver had been flung through the front windshield and wasn't moving. The puddle of blood under him was just getting bigger. My dad told me they were almost certain the guy was dead. But they couldn't go up and check because a power line was down right by the accident and there was no getting anywhere near until the power company shut it down. It took a long time. But they finally pulled through and got the power turned off. My dad and his partner go up. And my dad jokingly says hey. I think this guy is dead. How about you? And the guy raises his head and goes no I'm not. Flagpole fell and crushed a 4 year old. Splitting her head wide open. Worst was her mother screaming. Many years ago. There was a particularly large woman who had been arrested and she was being processed. They needed to search her. They began lifting up her fat rolls and underneath one of them was a grilled cheese sandwich. Yes. A sandwich. They had to scrap it out it because of how long it had been under there. Can you top that story? I have many more. I have a similar story. Paramedic here. Once went to a call for an extremely obese lady who fell and needed help up. Took 5 people to help her up. She was wearing a shirt that was probably 5 times too small and was pulled halfway up her body once we got her off the floor. After sitting her in her chair I noticed a black mark on her side. I go in closer to see what it is. Turned out to be chocolate icing from a cupcake. The cupcake was stuck in between one of the rolls. I then handed her the mashed cupcake and she placed it on a plate on her TV stand next to her chair. I'm pretty sure she ate it after we left. My first call as an EMT was an elderly woman who fell down her stairs and cracked her head open. Blood and brain matter were oozing out of her ears. My job was to bag her, give her oxygen with the bag valve mask. We met up with the air medics and they flew her to a trauma center. I think she ended up passing away at the hospital. I just remember the look her husband had on his face the whole time. Not my story. But a friend's. He got a call to a house with an old man that said he was constipated and was on the toilet for two days. He had a huge piece of shti prairie dog in out his ass and he was in serious pain. He said they didn't have a chance to get him off the toilet into the hospital so they were forced to do something at that moment. They found one of those huge metal spoons and starting a CRPing and breaking apart his bono sized shti while the man spread his cheeks. If I remember correctly. The guy was okay and finally made it to the hospital and went through a couple serious surgeries. How many curex was it? Fire medic. Have tons of f up stories. Here's one that's not tragic. Moron did it to himself. Dispatched to attempted suicide. Arrived to find 30 year old male laying on the ground with a Vegina face. He put a large caliber handgun under his chin and pulled the trigger. Successfully remodeling his face into the predator. I reach down to check his pulse as a formality. And he hops to his feet. Starts yelling and running around the house. Scared the shti out of me. Thought the Z outbreak finally happened. My uncle was NYPD in the South Bronx for 20 years so I've heard about a million truly unbelievable stories. But here's a good one. So he he trying to arrest this guy and it gets physical and a fight ensues. My uncle eventually subdues him but ended up dislocation the guy's shoulder really bad and dude is in extreme pain. So he takes him to the emergency room. A Bronx emergency room on a Saturday night is the crazier than any circus from what I'm told. So he gets to the emergency room and it's madness as usual. A doctor comes out. A young Indian guy who looks exhausted and at his wit's end. He recognizes the perp as this guy who routinely tries to get bogusly checked into the hospital and try and steal pain meds. Too bad for this perp. So the doc is basically like FCK this guy. Now you don't get pain meds this time. Hold him down cop and the doctor proceeds to work on his arm while the dude is screaming bloody murder.